Hi everyone, welcome to the second half of my button collection. Um, it took me a while to find them because I was looking for a jar and turned out they were in here in bags and containers. It's taken me two days to get this far because a lot of the ones that I had gotten recently really needed a good cleaning so it took me like a whole day between doing other things uh, to clean all those buttons because they really needed it trust me um, so they were some of my recent acquisitions and some of the things that were maybe found in jars from that garage that were really grody and they all needed to be cleaned so this is what they were. Since I did the video yesterday, I started doing some more research and found out that this is the worst way to store buttons. So here I have this nice little container my daughter had given me. She didn't want it anymore. And I thought, well, what a perfect little container. I can store all my, you know, little bags of buttons in there, sort them out in bags. Apparently, not good to store them like that. Okay, I'm going to explain why you can't store them like that. Remember when I first opened that box and some of these, I think this is parchment paper that I use, it was just disintegrating. Like it was just falling apart, crumbling in my hands. And yet some of them were fine. Like this is strawberries metal. That's because some of the old celluloid and uh, different things that they were made out of, buttons, they have chemicals in them that literally if you store them together or in plastic any kind of those types of materials it'll disintegrate it'll disintegrate the storage containers that you keep them in it'll disintegrate the buttons themselves they will actually start to crack and come apart the shanks on the back will fall off and it's what button collectors term as sick buttons. So you don't want your buttons to get sick. And if you put a sick button with other buttons, apparently it just, because it's all cracking up, it releases more of the chemicals and we'll get the buttons around them sick. So you don't want that happening. So I also, uh, did some more research because it's been so long since I've been into the buttons on telling the difference between which buttons is which, you know, if they're made out of Bakelite or Lucite or celluloid or whatever. And there's one trick that you can use of taking them and dipping them in hot water. So I brought in a, a tea kettle of hot water and I've been testing some of these and these ones here that I've tested you dip in the hot water you, and you smell them and if you're allergic to chemicals or formaldehyde don't do this but it is one method that they use to identify them they used to heat up a needle and poke the needle in the back and you know smell the smell and they could identify you know by the types of smells what it is so they say like for bakelite it smells like formaldehyde or cod liver oil or it has a sweet chemical smell whereas um the lucite though the celluloid buttons will smell like uh, vix or mothballs so these three here that I tested, like these ones had no smell at all. These three here that I tested were so strong. Oh, especially this one, really, really, really strong. Um, this one kind of had a sweet smell. These two were so strong, it hurt my nose. So just some side facts. And I was trying to think like, if I can't store them in containers like this, how the heck am I going to store them? So that's something that I've sort of been racking my brain with because I don't have a lot of space. If they all have to be spread out and laid out on fabrics or, you know, separated, not put in these plastics, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. Otherwise, let's get into 
this button collection. Okay, you've already seen these ones. These are Bakelite and celluloid. Um, I'm just going to move this hot water out of the way before I burn myself with it. These ones here, when I started looking at them and I tested them in the hot water, they smelt like animal. Now, when I first looked at them, I thought, you know, it kind of looks like tortoiseshell or horn or something like that. So it's a possibility these ones are horn or tortoiseshell. I used to press the, I think heat press the designs into them. And when it comes to cleaning them, there's a whole slew of information on how to go about cleaning each of them, uh, depending on what it is. So if you do, you know, like it would take me forever to explain, but there's a lot of good, good sites on the internet that explain how to clean them. So what you can use on one button, you can't use on other buttons and vice versa. So and I do also have this book that I've had for years and it doesn't go into all of the explanations um, very thoroughly. Like it, it gives you a little bit. It doesn't cover just antique buttons. It covers all kinds of buttons. Um, just has a small section on your antiques. Just has a small section on cleaning. So it's not very thorough. But there is a lot of information out there on the internet. Okay, let's go through and show you what I've got and what I've sorted out here. It won't take me that long, I don't think, to go through this. These are buttons that are... I'm going to get something to lay this. That's better. So these are... I tried to sort them out from like, you know, according to like... This is definitely shell. You can tell, right? got all those you you can you just get to know after a while so most of these I spent hours cleaning yesterday I didn't take the threads out of them but and these this container I can still sort again I'm sure there are probably a lot of shell buttons in here, and then there are the ones that are just sort of pearlized that kind of, they're different materials and they look like shell. So if I really had a good look at them, I could sort them out a little bit more. But they're all sort of similar kind of style buttons, so I just sort of kept them in this container. Okay, now this one was on my desk yesterday that somehow missed showing you. These are very much like, let's zoom in a little bit. So these are very, very much like the black ones that I showed you. And triangles with mother of pearl inside. And these, and I feel like they need a good cleaning as well. There's a nice set of those ones. And then these are the largest ones. I'll go from big to small, how's that sound? So there were some nice designs in this one. Really nice designs. Well, huge buttons. This one, like that's typical. You can't really tell if it's shell. It looks so much like it's shell. I'm gonna stick it in the hot water and just see. If it has a smell. No, it has no smell at all. These ones, a couple like that. There's a couple of nice moon glow buttons. I have to remember that term, moon glow. I keep wanting to call them moonstone. I won't take them all out of the bag, so I'll just show you, kind of hold them up and show you. Kind of assorted. I tried to uh, sort them out 
this section, like I know the one that I showed you yesterday, I already have a lot of these in it, but these are um, some of the ones that got kind of mixed up and not sorted with the other ones uh, in the past and then mixed with my newer acquisitions. These are specialty buttons because they're all sort of different. They all have different little styles and shapes. And so I put them in this button, in this bag here. And then these were are all your kind of basic white buttons. Now some of these are probably glass. In fact, I know some of them are glass. And some of them are probably shell and they just need, you know, a closer inspection and do the smell test and and different things. One of the things I look at in trying to figure out if they're glass is First thing you that you do is you pick it up and you feel it. If it's really cold to the touch, chances are it's glass. These are some other the big ones have some interesting shapes. I kind of divided them between your clear looking ones and then your ones that are white white. So these are my largest clear white, and then I sort of. Okay, these are the ones that are super clear and there are glass mixed in with these ones. Let's dump this one out. That's interesting. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so these ones are glass and plastic. We'll lose sight. Let's dip some of these and see. Let's see that feels very warm. Oops, there's one stuck in there. Feels very warm to the touch. It has an ever so faint smell, but hardly anything that feels warm as well. No smell at all. This one here looks old, old, but it's pretty small. I don't know if I'll get a smell off of that one. The water's very hot. A little bit of a sweet smell. No, no smell. So what did they say about the loose site? The loose site will have no smell. That's why a lot of these you, I'm not smelling. And then if you feel it and it feels cool, chances are it's glass. Let's see if I can tell. I'm struggling with this. It is really warm in here though, so. The heat in this apartment is so weird. Sometimes that one's cold. Super cold. Yep, so there's some glass in here. Look at that nice, beautiful, clear button. Seems to have some nice designs. That would make a nice flower center. Oops, sorry. Not used to being so zoomed in here. That would make a nice flower center. It's very clear. And has all those nice little spots on them. Nice clear button. And then a ring. Okay. These are a lot of those flat, flattish kind of pearlized buttons. So there's a lot of, I'm just going to zoom out a wee bit here. I'm not going to open that one. And these ones now... <coughs> These ones are interesting because they have what looks like the plastic or celluloid on the back, but then on the front, they're clear. And if you look through the clear, you can see this pearlized look. So there's a name for these kind of buttons, which I can't remember the name of them or if they even have a name, but they have to have the two tones. They have to have the white on the back or a different color. Then they put a layer of some kind of a pearlized, I don't know how they do that. And then they have to have the clear on the top. So I put those kind of buttons in its own separate bag. 
and some of them do look very much this is see here's one that didn't get cleaned and here's one with a really fancy design on it I don't know if you can make that out it's really nice it's kind of fun to you know go through and sort out all these buttons categorize them it's kind of like zen <laughs> in a way okay now these ones are oh yeah these ones are uh, white ones that are all special designs I don't need to have these in the bag. I think I put these in the bag because these are all boating and anchor. But I have more boating and anchor. So, specialty designs. Like there's a little bow. And some triangle ones. Um, what's this? A little girl on it. You can see the little girl. Uh, it's a flower. Um, some designs of some kind. This one had a something else that fit in there, but I don't know what. To see if I can figure it out. Something like that. Nope. Nope. Anyways, you get the picture. Different type of button fits in there. Some carved. There's another anchor. Some anchors. Oops, and here's a glass one. Um, where's my glass? I'm going to keep this one out because I have another bag full of ones that I know are glass. Here's one that didn't get washed. And it's broken between the two holes. And these ones look like they're shell. It's hard to say. Some shank ones, different designs. Anyways, you get the picture. So they don't really fit into, it's hard to tell what, you know, how to divide them up, what kind of categories to put them in. So ones that just sort of look special and were white got put into this bag. And I was thinking I would sew them. Oh, another thing is, do not the old button collectors used to use metal and attach their buttons with metal to cards and um, they would frame them up it's just ordinary white buttons and nowadays people are getting them and inheriting them or buying them and the buttons that have been stored all locked up in these frames with metal against them have just disintegrated the celluloid and lucite they don't to bake light they don't handle that type of material very well so they're getting them and all the backs are just disintegrating off of them and yeah so now they're learning not to store their buttons that way. These looks like some more of those ones that have the the pearlized effect. With the different colored backs, the white backs, and then the pearl on the front. These are some moonstones with very curved tops. Moon. There I go, calling the moonstones again. Moon glow buttons. And these ones are a nice set. Some lines on them. Very pearlized. Okay. I said I wasn't going to take them all out of the bags. Okay. And then these ones are the plastic ones I was telling you about that are all missing the little gems in them. So either... They didn't get finished being made, or someone took them out, or in being donated to the, wherever they got donated to that I bought them from. Um, the rhinestones came out, I don't know. But anyways, there's a whole bunch of missing rhinestones. Now these ones, I am going to take out because they are um, 
all the real shell buttons. This is, I think I only have two that have the dark backs. So that's what they look like on the front. And out of the whole button collection, I have very few of these kind. I believe. But I do have in the other box that I showed you yesterday, I do have a lot more of these type of buttons. And this one has writing on it, so I'm going to put that aside. I'll show you these ones. There's another large one. I don't need to be in baggies. That's the way that I had bought them. They were in baggies like this. It's another large one. This is the shell. These are all shell. Those are all shell. Very nice. So some of these I will be keeping. They'll be going in a special collection. I was thinking of doing like, um, getting like 100% cotton, sewing them gently to the cotton and then putting them in some sort of a book that could sit sort of open on somehow so that it could get airflow. It's kind of how I was thinking of storing them. Okay, so I think these are all the white ones. I'll just put those back for now. My favorite out of all of them are definitely the shells and the glass, anything glass. I really like glass. Okay, now this container containing is Oh, assortment of things. Some of these I'm not going to dump out. Um, this one I'm not going to dump out. Okay, these are all like all my dark assorted buttons that are just sort of plain and ordinary. So, I'm not going to dump all these ones out. These are, these I'll dump out because these are plastics. This one is a painted one, and I haven't found a whole lot of painted buttons, so someone might have... Not too often I hear two ambulances going by to the hospital at the same time. This is probably Bakelite. I'm just interested in smelling some of these. See if I can. Some of them are old and some of them look newer. No, no smell on that one. Nope. Oh, yes. Really strong. Really strong, like the formaldehyde. So, there's your old bake light. There are a couple of formulations also that have their really strong smell. And this one, I bet you anything will smell. But any of the plastic or bake light looking ones that have designs, oh, yeah, reeks. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore tonight. That is yuck. Yeah, so any of the ones that had really fancy designs on them that were kind of plasticky or Bakelite looking, I kept in this bag. Zoom in a little bit for you. Hopefully you can see them really well. The different designs. Some of them are not quite as fancy as the ones I showed you yesterday. They're still nice. I have these are now the ones that had that I bought that had names like brand names either written on them or on the baggies. I put them all in this bag 
and so like Burberry a lot of these are Burberry and these ones are just they came together in a bag but they're very distinctive style I'll probably put those in a lot and just sell them on eBay because you never know a seamstress that um, repairs a lot of these might want to keep buttons these are a nice little set And these are all my green and blue kind of all got smooshed together into one pile of buttons. So those are all the green and blue from this container, from this set. So when I do the final organizing, I'll put together what I showed you yesterday and with, with like a... I'll do more sorting and organizing according to color and type and all that kind of stuff. And so I have more of an idea of what I have. When I'm looking for something, a certain color, a certain style, I'll know where to go. Or if I'm putting together, you know, racks and I want a, a nice variety, I can put them together. Now, this is interesting. These are all the ones that look like either horn or wood that one's definitely wood or the nut the nut what am I talking about I'm talking about the I don't think I wrote it down oh yes I did the vegetable ivory it comes from the carozo nut or the tag tree Tagu tree? Tag tree? It's a South American palm. Uh, first introduced in 1862 and was popular between... Okay, first introduced in 1862 and was popular between the 1870s and 1920s. So this one you can tell. Like they say that what they'll do is they'll make the basic shapes and then they dye them and then they'll carve the top afterwards and put the drill the hole through the back afterwards so you can tell because when they drill into it it's a different color so I have at least one um, this one I can't tell what it is it could be bone it has that look of bone. It's very cracked. I'm going to dip this. I know I said I wasn't going to, but. No, there's no smell. So it's either bone. I think this one is bone. Or the nut. This one is probably Bakelite that they've sprayed to look like. It's vegetable ivory. I'm dipping. No, nothing. There's another one that could be the vegetable ivory. If I were to take the shank out, if there was a way to take the shank out, you could tell because it would be lighter color inside the drill hole. Can't really tell. This one could be the vegetable ivory. It could be wood. Feels like wood. Could also be bone. This one, it's kind of hard to tell. This one looks very much like wood. Oops. These ones are definitely wood. That one's wood that's been painted on the top with some sort of very shiny paint. And these are some wood. This one, I'm not sure what this is. The holes are the same color. Really difficult to tell. But anyways, these look all sort of natural. So I've put them in its own special category. And 
And then these are all the ones that kind of, they're not real leather, but they have that woven leather look. Let's just take one out for you. There's some dark browns and some lighter browns. There. And they just, they have the metal shank, some of them, some of them, they just have a plastic shank. And these ones are some more, these are kind of those, I don't know what you call these type of, I'm not sure what you call these type. These are wood. And this one is actual real leather. Looks like real leather. Must be real leather. So there's a real sewing on there. You can see where they've come together. I don't know if it isn't leather. It's sure made to look like leather. Doesn't it look like real leather to you? And some wood. Is this a wood button? Look at. Why do you keep doing that? Looks like real wood. And then these ones are kind of have variegated colors. So I just sort of put them aside in their own little bag. And these are an assortment of fabric buttons, fabric covered buttons. And some of the buttons even come with their own threads. Um, there's that one. There's a whole bunch of thread packages here. So I'll save those for when I'm making up a sewing book. Now we get into the metal buttons. Lots of metal buttons. Lots of metal buttons. Okay. You see those through there? I'm not going to take them all out of the bank because they're, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of buttons. Don't mess them out. Lots of metal buttons there, different types. I might have showed you these yesterday. They were sitting in a container, but I sort of, I put them all together with my metal buttons. Look at that one. This one had some kind of a gemstone in it. I don't even know. Oh yeah, these are the ones that, um, they have the shank down embedded into the button because they believe that it produces less wear and tear on the thread when the, the thread is inside the button. How you sew that on? I don't know. Look at this one. Clear on the back. Metal on the front. So these are probably not very old. Um, in fact, this one feels like plastic. There are some in here that feel like, you know, they're a composite material of some kind. And then these ones here, they're real metal. And they feel old, Canadian military or police, La Vogue. And I didn't show you, where did I put it? Oh yeah, I don't know if I showed you this yesterday. Zoom out again. I have this whole bag of carded buttons. I don't know if I showed you yesterday or when I first got them when I did the haul but I'll show okay I'll show you them in a second Put these back get one thing done at a time so those are these are those metal buttons and these are not sorted according from antiques and non-antiques yet Some you can tell right away just by looking at them, right? 
and others you need to do some research at least i do these are newer oh this these come in a really fancy package but they have no writing on them at all to let me know what brand they are so i can't you know i don't know how i would sell these might as well just use them in a project. Here's a nice little set. I think I showed you those ones before. Or at least one similar to that. Huh. And this, I don't know what this is. It's like a little cap. Oh no, this isn't the one that's a little cap. It actually is a button. But there's one, there's something here that is just a little cap. It doesn't have a shank at all. Okay. There's this set. Silver. And they look like a composite button. And then this is a whole mixture of old... Oh, okay, there we go. There's the cap. Oh, it's got two little teeny holes in it that you can sew. That's silver. Oh, it's got a little baby one, too. It's got two sizes. It's little holes. It's metal. You can sew those on, so I don't know what they're, what they're for. And then there are a couple here that are <coughs> metal, but they're colored. There are some military buttons. This nice gold one. Some gold buttons. There's this pretty pink one with the center. I hope this light is good enough for you because um it's not daylight today. It's nighttime right now, so I don't know how they would show up. I don't know what this is for. To look for the other piece for it. Obviously, there's another piece. This looks very old. This looks like a taggy nut. I cannot tell what this is. It's like it's carved almost, but it looks also like there's a seam. Like it's, maybe it was pressed. Okay, enough of that. I did say I was going to have make this video a lot shorter. I'd have to do some splicing and editing. Okay, these are definitely glass, so I just stuck them in there because I knew they were glass. I'm going to take this other one that I know is glass. Pop that in there. Now these ones are interesting. These are lead. This giant button is so heavy. Now these lead pieces they would put in curtains or... If you were a real lady, a real, real lady, like a real, real lady, like Queen Elizabeth or <laughs> a princess, and you did not want your dresses flying up at all in the wind, they were weighed down. Usually they were weighed down with pennies or something like that, but um, curtains, they would also, also weigh them down so they wouldn't be flapping around and so that they would hang the way they were supposed to. But this one is really, really, really heavy. So I don't know what this really heavy one would be used for. I really don't. There's buttonholes in it. A tarp. So it wouldn't flop around. I don't know. It's got me. Okay, power buttons, I showed you that. It's a nice little set of buttons that you might have seen earlier. I don't remember. These are buttons that have little gems in the center, or shouldn't. A uh, wing glow button, and some other nice little buttons that have 
some sort of something in the center. And then these are moon glow buttons. It has it have that look to them? Very pretty. And oh, I love this one. I love this one. Very large. Very pretty. Okay. We are almost done, guys. Almost. We have shell buttons that are dark gray and some of these may not be shells. I have to have a closer look at them, but some I know are so, or if they're not, they're a darn good replica of them. I'll have a closer look at them. These are all those blacks that are missing the gem in the middle. These are a big bag full of gray or grayish, tanned gray sort of looking buttons, nothing special. And these are kind of um, multi, not really multicolored, but they have more than one color going through them, sort of variegated. Oh, they're nice. And these are, this one and this bag are matte buttons. And they're all different colors, but they're very, very matte on both sides. They don't have any shiny on them whatsoever. And they're a newer style, apparently. They're not old or antique, as far as I know. So I have this that has all different colors in it. And then these ones are kind of pinkish, which leads me to the next bundle of reds and pinks. So these are the large in reds and pinks. So I have this fabric, oops, fabric button in red. Look at this button. It's huge. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's huge. I don't know what you'd put that on decorative for something. There's a red button that, oh, it's got writing on it. Okay, keep that separate. Some nice moonstone buttons, moon glow buttons. So these are my large pink to reddish, or pink to red color. And then these are the smaller reds. I won't take them out, but there's all sorted small reds, pinks, moon glows, and all kinds. And then these are the purple, all different purples, purple shades of every type. And then these are purples, which are missing a stone. Purple to purple and, and pink. And there's actually one that does have the gem in it. You see that? It has the gem in it. Only one. All the rest they don't. And I think that is it. I'm going to show you the card ones now. Carded buttons really quickly. Put my lead ones away. Lots of gray. Those are cute. Maybe they have metal on them, holding them together, so that metal's gonna have to come off. I'll have to replace it with a string. These ones are metal anchored, so again, they'll have to all be taken off and replaced with string. <laughs> 
Same with that one. Some wooden ones. You might have seen this in a haul video. I don't know. Oh, so these are... Let's take these out of here. Oops. Ooh, these look very old. Let's have a look. Yeah, they smell. They've got that sweet smell. So they would be celluloid. Yep. I think these ones are the celluloid. That's a nice one. Some pearl ones. More pearl. Some snaps. That's interesting. Lady fashion. A lot of lady fashions in here. Oh, that's pretty. Deep blue one. This will probably be put in a, a um, sewing journal of some kind. Ooh, these look like nice glass. Yep, they feel cold. That's the white ones. And then I have this whole tub of notions, sewing notions. And there was a, another big thing of sewing notions somewhere or other around here. Not sure where, but there's somewhere around here. More sewing notions. Now this is from the bunch that I sorted yesterday, all the sewing notions that I got out of it. These are the sewing notions that I got out from today's bundle. And these are notions that I've picked up lately in hauls. So, all kinds of things. Double face satin ribbon. Oh, wow. So, if they're all in packages, then I was saving them up for some sewing journals. Lots of things here. Button making paraphernalia. Yeah, I might have shown these on some videos. Some, even some needles. Lots of elastics, which I'm going to give to my daughter because she's been sewing. I didn't even open this. <laughs> she's been sewing lately makes these I won't say what she makes but she makes interesting things and um, she needs the wide elastic so I'll probably keep this for my sewing box because I do use the small elastics in um, sewing and projects I'll give her the big ones um, this is oh, this is also elastic Lots of things in here. Look at this. All kinds of snaps and attachments. Yep. Lots of cool stuff. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I think I might have shown you some of the... Oh, there's more buttons. Oh no, these are from the other... Oh, there's even patching, patch material. Okay, so that's my sewing collection. I was just going to quickly show you kind of an idea that I had for storing them. If you have boxes like this, you know, you get chocolates in them, right? For these chocolates. I think I got these last year. Um, 
I was thinking of punching lots of holes in them so they can have airflow. Laying on some uh, cotton fabric and maybe wrap them like if there's a little bunch together. Because they say you can store like with like. So I would put maybe the celluloid, I'd spread them out a little bit, but kind of wrap them up in little uh, cotton, little bits of cotton fabric, and then put them in here. And the bottom one, after I get the holes in it and the fabric laid on it, make some legs for it so it would sit there and then get another layer and make some kind of spacer so that they can be spaced apart a bit somehow. Uh, not sure how. But even then it's going to take a lot of these because I have a lot of buttons. So I'm either going to have to just bite the bullet and do it and find a place for them or um, sell them because I already did have some that were disintegrating so I, I have to get the real old ones and start taking care of them better. So that is my button collection. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it inspired you and I hope you will keep watching my videos because as soon as I get these organized into uh, a little better system. I will have um, the three drawings for a button giveaway, maybe even more, we'll see. So until then, I hope you guys are all well and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.